Good morning, blessed and highly favored of the Lord. We welcome you to another service with us here at House of Power Outreach. My name is Pastor Tori, and Pastor Rita and I are senior pastors here at House of Power Outreach. Uh, we just welcome you and thank you for joining us this morning as we celebrate the Lord and, and the King's Day that we worship God with everything we have in our heart, soul, mind, and body, that you are blessed and don't ever, ever let anyone steal your blessings from you. I pray that every word that might have been spoken against you, spoken about you, that you know that they fall into the ground and cannot stand in your life. Don't give them a step. Don't give them a stool. You go and be free. Uh, we want to send you over to our website at hopochurch.org. Uh, please take a moment, scroll through the ministries and different things and, and pray over them, lay hands on your screen whatever format that you're looking at them and and just pray for the ministries here and pray for the outreach and all the different um, um, families and and just the whole body of christ as we're spreading the gospel throughout the entire world we also would, would welcome you and love your help to partner with us financially and helping and building the kingdom of heaven uh throughout round rock here wherever in in an entire world that has god put on your heart purpose in your heart what you should give uh, that God loves a cheerful giver. So let him move on you on, on what you, he, you know, he desires for you to give into the ministry. Uh, we will stand in faith and be in agreement with you that God shall not be mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. So that we're going to pray and then we're going to jump into the word this morning. And let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the rest that you're bringing to our land. We thank you that you said those who are called by your name would humble themselves and, and pray. Then would you heal our land? We thank you for the humility. We do not allow the world to be in authority over our land. We pray for, the God, for God to be, our, be the greatest influence. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we align ourselves with you, Lord God, that we are for you. You said those who are not with me are against me. And Lord God, I thank you that we are with you. And we're with the, what your word says, and Lord God, that we honor you in all that we say and do. We bless you, Lord God. I thank you for this is the day the Lord has made. We will, we shall rejoice. Father, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, this morning, I want to preach about being God people. We are God's people. Even my people. I was like, say, those, those are my people, right? And, and God is saying that about you. You are his people that's my people right there and you got to know you belong to god you're his uh and that we belong to jesus in ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 35 through 37 it says and they shall shall say this land that was desolate is become like the garden of eden and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited then the heathen that are left around about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for, th I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like flock." And we just uh, are, are just uh, lifting up to God that is, as God is, is increasing us and, and blessing us and, and ministering to us, that we are allowing him to be the one that makes, it, makes us his children and that we belong to him. He, he is our God and, and we are his people. We, we, just, we just belong to God with everything that we say and do. And, and, and God, is, God is honored by what we do. God is honored by who we are. And, it, and he clearly it said that he will be our God and we shall be his people. God makes it clear we belong to him and forever eliminates the enemy from trying to use uh, being unwanted or abandoned as a way that God will, will, will treat us. God will never treat us and, and abandon us. He's there with us all the time, you know, and, and he's always there. And that's, that's kind of one of those goals or, or things that, that you can almost say hashtag goals. Somebody's always with me. God's always with me. That's, that's my hashtag is God is always with me. And, and as we bless God and honor God with our heart, soul, mind, and body, he too, he too is with us. 
He, he's, he's there. He's for us. And, and, and he, he says, and I'll always be with you. And you got to know that because at times, especially during this pandemic, this, this thing of being in your house, everyone feels isolated, feels separated. But no, God has always been there. Take that time to talk to God. Take that time to change up. You don't need to redecorate your living room or redecorate your house. You just need to turn your focus and affection toward the spirit of God. And start housing in his presence and having that be your filter as to everything that you look at, everything that you see, that let that be your filter. Let that be the guide that God takes you through. This is the understanding that salvation brings to us in that we are now by covenant, by covenant, uh, connected to the bloodline of Christ and not earthly men. Man, that's that's a hallelujah. That's a praise the Lord that that you should got you got to get a hold of that. I thank Jesus. I'm not connected to my bloodline. There's alcoholics in my bloodline. There's there's a there's a anger issues in my bloodline. There's addiction in my bloodline. But God says I've made a covenant that you are on my bloodline now. Receive the freedom of God in the name of Jesus. You do not have to be a part of of the uh, ancestors sin you do not have to follow that you can follow Christ and be free because who the son is set free is free indeed you are you are delivered God's got a covenant that you got a new bloodline you got the ability to walk by faith and not by sight you got the ability that when everything is against you know that you and God are one man praise God for that Praise God, you don't have to live after the sicknesses of your family. You don't, have to, uh, you don't have to live under the threat because somebody before you had cancer, somebody before you had diabetes. Thank God that you can get under the mercy and grace of God, and God can show you and give you wisdom how to turn that around and, and see yourself healed in the name of Jesus. You got you to bless God with that. You got to thank God that you're not in the, in the lineage of divorce anymore, that you are married, and, and, that who, and God says, till death do you part. Somebody got to die before this to end. You, that's who you are now. If you've come to Christ, that's who you are. You're under the, the calling, the kingdom, the promises of God, and that is a blessing. I believe that what happens to people that have a bad family history uh, is that they spend so much of their life trying not to be connected to it, they end up isolated from everyone and feeling like they don't belong. And I, I, I believe that with all my heart, that that was one of my things was to like, the one thing I don't want to do is be like that person. And I spent so many, so many years running away from what I didn't want to be. I never set up a place to go. I never had a destination. I didn't have a place to finish. I didn't have a place to rest in. I knew what to run from. I didn't know what to run to. But here comes Jesus. And I knew to run to him. I knew to run into the Father's arm. I knew to run into the voice of God. I knew to understand that there's a calling. There's a purpose. There's a plan that I can run to and not always running from something. I think you need to be in a place where you schedule your victory, schedule your best moments, schedule your best days, and, and just be in a place where you're saying, God, it's all you. That's who it's all about, and, and he is faithful to do so. In 2 Corinthians of, of 5 and 7, it says, Behold, we are a new creation. Old things are passed away. I'm a new creature. When I came to Christ, I'm a new creature. I'm newly created. Old things have passed away. Behold, I have become new. Isn't that something? Behold, I have become new. Now, I've become new. Why would I sit up? And knowing I've become new, why would I sit up and go, okay, but I still owe these things? No, you owe nothing. That's the power of grace and mercy. You are brand new. You got to understand that you are brand new. I had a great friend of mine. We spent a lot of time talking about the Bible, but he was convinced in his mind, and I believe he still is to a point, that because he smoked years ago, that someday he may, he's going to get cancer because he did wrong years ago. Isn't that crazy? If that were the case, what was the point of grace that wipes away all of our sins? It wipes away everything that we did. He's not going to let he's not going to wipe away your sins and then let you keep the problem, let you keep the results of it. 
no. And I would try to tell him, I'd correct him every single time, but he would, he would fight for that. Almost like it was like, no, you, you are, that's not who you are anymore. God has, God has released you from that and you are delivered. That's the power of grace. So, so quit accepting generational curses. And start receiving the generations of eternal life, the generation of blessing. Here on earth, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? Again, I'm receiving the generation. My, my children will know God from, from start of their life to the end of their life. They are blessed to know God or follow after God, follow hard after Jesus. So we must stop speaking what, what was supposed to be us without God and live in what God has called us to through grace. Man, quit talking about you got mama's temper and, and daddy's violence. Quit, quit that. Stop that. He said, I got my heavenly father's covenant that I'll have peace, that I have the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering. I'm patient. You have those things. Keep speaking them over. Well, pastor, I'm not, I'm not living up to it. Well, don't, don't start talking down about it. Talk what, this is the thing, speak what the Bible says. Say what the word of God says about you. It says you are a new creation. Old things are passed away. They're dead. And so you got to quit wearing what's dead and start living in your new life, your new body, your new shell. Grace is the undeserved blessing that de delivered us from a well-deserved punishment of eternal da damnation. So grace is that undeserved blessing. Well, I, I don't just, Pastor, I, I, I deserve to get this. I deserve, it's in my family. I deserved it. Well, that's, what, that's why grace was here. It's the undeserved blessing that took you out of the well-deserved punishment. It's the favor of God. It, it is all over you. That's what it's about. That's why you can't earn it. It's a gift. And God shows it and moves in us. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through 15, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregations in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud, and I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Now, now you understand, this is Lucifer. This is talking about the devil. And he was kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be like God. He was going to replace God. That's the same thing he used with Adam and Eve in the garden. God knows you'll be just like him. He knows you'll know what he knows. He's, it's the same trap. It's the same thing where, where people come to church for a little bit, get enough, and think that they can run their life from that point on. It is the same attack. You don't, you, don't, you don't really need God by your side all the time. You don't really need to go to God for everything. You don't really, and, and what it is, it's the same message. I will just play God in this part of my life. I'll just be like the most high. And he was removed from heaven. So he's kicked out of heaven. He will use the exact same accusation against people to believe that the same thing will happen to them. He'll, he'll make, try to make you believe that you'll get kicked out too. No, God loves you. He wants you there. He wants you with him. You, you can't let this thing, because he called you his people. You're, you're his people. I'm going to kick out my people. I just, God's not doing that. So, so God calling us his people helps, helps us deal with the attack like that's on churches today and, and of feeling isolated and abandoned. Look, the church is, is basically uh, the whole, the world's been put on blast. And, and, you know, we have to go back to what the word of God says. We have to go back to the Bible that, that, that we're God's people. Now, God's people will follow God's word. And obey what the word of God says. Obey the commandment of God. And, and we'll walk and live in that word. That's, that's, that's God people. That's God's carrying the name. Right? He carried a name. You're known by the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. 
That, that as we go into that and as the church is, it's trying to isolate the church. Trying, you know, I've heard people say, well, the church, is, uh, Jesus is racist. Well, what are you talking about? That, that, the, that the KKK started with Jesus. No, they, the KKK didn't start anything. Jeez, God was here before anything was. He's creator. He was here. Just because people with bad intentions was calling out his name and calling on his name, calling on his, on his name, that don't mean God was bad. Right? And we said before, don't stop worshiping God because what is bad with people and miss out on what is good in God. See, God is good. God is faithful. God is faithful. I tell you what would be sad is that even a KKK person know to call on Jesus and you don't. You know, you got to make sure you know to call on Christ. And that's who will be there with you. So you will be my people is a deliverance from the abuse that made people feel inhumane. You will be my people. I mean, if you ever, if, you know, folks who've been abused, they don't even feel like they're human. They don't even feel like, you know, they feel like, oh, what I've been through. Why would anyone want me? And they, and they begin to distance themselves because they think that, that somehow, some way, they're the dirt. They're the dirt. The, the, the abuse that someone did, someone did that, that they were the wrong one. They were the inhumane one. They had no people. They had no fellowship with God. And so then they went and did something to someone else, and, and, and it made that person feel like they're not human. They're not lovable. They're not, you know, and they, you can carry that for years if you don't go to God and get healed. There are people today still living in, in an abused child body, and they're 50, 60 years old. But God has a deliverance. You're his people. You're the one he loves. He loves. He cares for you. It's to hold you and let you know you're free. Those, those, those fingerprints are not on you anymore. That person is not on you anymore. Their, 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 their attack against you no longer lives. Christ lives in you. And that is, that is a powerful part of us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 4, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into, into this grace. Wherein we stand and rejoice in, in, the, in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations work with patience, and patience, experience, and experience, hope. So knowing we, are his, knowing we are his people teaches us to give thanks for promises and give thanks in tribulations, right? I don't thank him for the tribulation because he wasn't bringing it to me. I thank him in the tribulation. I thank him for his promises. And as I'm thanking him for his promises, if things go wrong in my life, I'm still going to thank him in the midst of those things. Many times we start thanking God for what God didn't bring. But we need to be thankful in the midst of whatever comes our way. If that makes sense to you. God is not bringing evil things on you to teach you something. As we read in, back in Matthew a few sermons ago, if you know how to give good gifts, how much more does your earthly father know how to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? He gives good. He's a good God. This is key to not feeling like no one or, no thing or nothing cares about you in hard times. See, because if I know how to be thankful for the promise and being, be thankful in the hard times, this will keep me from feeling like, man, nothing ever works for me. Nothing ever goes my way. All things just go bad for us. We, we never catch a break. Just nothing seems to work out. We're always going through something. It comes in threes. You hear people say that all the time. It comes in threes. Well, quit looking for the other two. Right? Get in the midst of the one and be thankful to God and look, at, look for him. Look at him. Our measurement in life should always be according to the grace of God. So it is being thankful that you belong to Jesus. No matter what, I, I belong to Jesus. No matter what comes my way, I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I am not orphaned spiritually. I belong to Jesus. I've, I've talked to many kids who, who grew up in, in, in homes and in foster homes and was wanting to be adopted so bad, but people after people would come and not take them. And for years of not being taken, they find it hard to be accepted. 
<laughs> well, when they are taught that Jesus accepts them, that he was the true father that came down and adopted them, no matter what the age, they can say, Abba, Father. They can say it for the first time. And, and, it, and there's such a joy. There's a, there's a release. There's a fulfillment in them being able to say that. Because they wanted to say it to a person on earth. They wanted to say it in a family setting. They wanted to say it in a setting like every other kid. But God made sure they got to say it to him. Yeah, I understand that. Maybe your parents are no longer here. Maybe you, you're not in, in a good relationship with that. You know, for, number one, make sure you go get in forgiveness if they're still alive. And, and forgive them and let them forgive you. But by all means, go to your heavenly father and, and enjoy that hand-to-hand -hand fellowship with God. In Psalms chapter 27 and verse 10 through 11, it says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in, in plain path because of mine enemy. So God goes to the, to the highest of highest that could be in your life, mother and father. He said, even if they forsake you, because, again, if you've ever been in that, in that arena and been able to talk to children whose parents have abandoned them and parents who've left them and hurt them or, or abused them or, or just said some mean things and didn't want them, if you've ever been in that place, you got to understand, here's where God is saying, even the closest one that should have been the most loving of all, even if they go off, I will always be here. I will never leave you or forsake you. Even the job, even the dream, even the thing you thought was going to work, it has forsaken you. God says he'll never leave you or forsake you. No matter how important it was supposed to be on the, world, on the earth, God says I'm still better than that. I still got some for you. The hurt of having parents forsake a child can, can be healed by the acceptance of of Jesus. I watched it. It was the thing when I gave my life back to Christ, a group called Love All People. Those kids' parents had done the most worst things to them. And all those kids kept saying, I can't wait one day to see my family. I can't wait to see my mother and father and just go up to them and hug them and show them what God has loved. Man, I thought that was powerful because that's not what I was thinking. The thought of feeling unwanted is replaced with the teaching of Jesus Jesus' love for them, right? He's, it's, that's that's that, that thought now. And now I'm being taught that Jesus loved because it's one thing to accept God, right? But you have to get in the word. And that's why we tell you, don't just, don't just have your ticket to heaven. Grow in the word of God. Grow in the adoption of the father. Grow as a child of God. Grow in the word of God. Understand who you are in Christ. Get in your family lineage, you don't need Ancestries.com. You need King James. When these types are the things, when, the, when these types of things are, are confronting, are confronted, it unlocks the desires for people to walk in their calling, knowing that God will be there until the very end, knowing that God will walk with you. When somebody else stop walking with you, know God will continue. You are, you are God-inspired idea. You are a God-inspired idea. Don't allow weeds to grow through the cracks from your past and steal you away from what God has in store for your future. The voice we are willing to believe will determine the future we will ultimately hold. What voice do you believe? Whose report do you believe? You believe the report of the Lord or you believe the report of, of man, of your hurts, of your past? You believe those things that, 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 that what someone here on this earth did to you? Or do you want to believe in the Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who did something for you? I, I believe you do. Whatever unwanted place you have in your life, let's give that to God right now. I want you to present it to God. You just, you're going to take that thing away from your heart, and you're going to present it to Jesus right now. As we pray, we're going to lift it. We're just going to give all those things to God and walk in and, and enjoy being God people. Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray. I pray just in my spirit, just as sensing the, the hurt and emotional abandonment and pain that, that people feel just, just like, why can't this person show and give love 
Why do they have to abandon me emotionally? Why do I have to abandon? They may be there physically, but they've abandoned me emotionally. But Lord, I pray that they come in and, and recognize that they are God people, that you are God to them, and they are your people. That Father God, that you are igniting in them the fellowship of your word, of your covenant to be a part of you forever, for eternity. And I thank you, Jesus, that everything that felt like a lost cause, everything that felt like it left, all of that stuff is being wiped away by the, the, by the promise and the grace of God that says you're a new creation in Christ. You now have the bloodline of Jesus, the bloodline of by stripes you're healed, that he's a mender of a broken heart. You now have the bloodline that he, the son of God who came to take away the sins of the world, they have the bloodline of that. I do not have to live up to the failures of my fathers and my mothers and my other ancestors. And I can live according to the grace and mercy of God that while I was yet sinners, he died for me, he loved me, he gave me eternal life father we grab a hold of that we thank you for adopting us we thank you for calling us your own and we believe we receive in the family i pray if anyone is lost and they they would turn to you and say jesus save me i pray right now they experience that fellowship of family and eternal life lord we believe it is so we believe it is done in jesus name amen thank you and god bless you we'll see you next time